praise. We give you glory. Truly the Lord is in this place this morning. If you can sense the movement of the Holy Spirit right now, I want you to just lift your hands and begin to thank Him with an audible voice. Begin to let your voice be stronger than my voice this morning. If you're sitting in the back or you're back there quiet, begin to let your voice be stronger than my voice this morning. Come on. Begin to thank Him. Begin to thank Him. Begin to thank Him. Begin to thank Him. Come on, begin to thank him all over this place. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is God good? That's it. Is that it? Hallelujah. Is God good this morning? Hallelujah. Has it been good to you? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, worship team. If you have your Bibles, open them with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 28. And what a weekend we had there at the Mother Church. And you know, somebody say overflow. Such an overflow to be able to go in there this weekend. And to partner with Pastor Sonny Jr., Sister Kim, and to see the collective hunger that is rising in the ministry of Victory Outreach. Somebody say hunger, thirst. Blessed are those who hunger and what? And what? They shall be filled. They shall be filled. And I'm so excited because we know that on October 1st, the Lord opened up heaven over our church. I believe that that move of God was not only for us, but how many know there's a move of God coming to the ministry of Victory Outreach all over the world? All over the world. It was exciting to talk to the prayer leaders there who were there who gathered at the prayer summit. And... They were energized, energized. How many know that the strategy of the enemy is to silence prayer? Come on, say amen. The strategy of the enemy is to silence prayer and to see the prayer leaders energized, charged. Many of them had been fasting, separating, but just the level of power that was there because how many know there's also a level of power here? Who could feel the level of power in this church? And we know how that power is being produced, right? It's being produced because we are consecrating ourselves. We are separating ourselves. We are fasting. Huh? Now, today is officially the final day of the fast. And <laughs> someone's excited. <laughs> I think they're excited because they did it. Come on, somebody. And, you know, tomorrow we'll, we'll get back to, some of you will get back to your normal routine of eating, but I, I've determined in my heart, church, I've determined, I'm a, I'm a changed man. I'm a changed man. And I've determined in my heart that fasting will be a lifestyle for me. Fasting will be a lifestyle for me. My, my goal this year, and pray for me, and I, and I encourage you to join me, my goal this year is to fast 100 total days. 100 total days. So I will continue. I will, I will press through. I will, you know, eat here and there and then get back on the fast. I, I determined that the first three days of every month I'm going to be separating uh, with water only because how many know that there is revival that's going to continue to be released. Somebody say, release it. Genesis chapter 28, verse 10. And I don't plan on speaking very long. It reads like this. It says, now Jacob went from Beersheba and went towards Haran. So he came to a certain place and he stayed there all night. 
because the sun had set and he took one of the stones at, at that place and he put it at his head and he laid down in that place to sleep and then he dreamed someone say he dreamed and behold a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to the heaven and there look at this the angels of God were ascending and descending the angels of God were ascending and descending how I many know when you fast you activate heavenly activity so go on down to verse 15 he said behold this is the Lord speaking behold I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you now listen to what Jacob says and this is the key then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it look at your neighbor and tell him did you know come on look at him tell him did you know that the Lord is in this place you may be seated did you know that the Lord is in this place. Is he here? In Psalms 85, this scripture has been very personal to me. I made a shirt that you can pick up after service <laughs> because the scripture is very personal and it reads in Psalms 85, verse six, it says, will you not revive us again? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? And as was mentioned earlier in the service, we've been under open heaven for, I think it's been 120 days now. And we've been experiencing the outpouring of the Spirit of God. And I want you to know that miracles are being released. Miracles are happening. I'm receiving reports of healings. I'm receiving reports of breakthrough. I'm receiving reports that the backslider is coming home. And whenever you're under an open heaven, how many know that's when miracles certainly do happen? Revival is not a miracle. Revival is not a miracle. A miracle is something that happens outside of nature's ability. Okay? A miracle is something that happens outside of nature's ability. But revival is not a miracle because the Lord has given you and I the means and the power to open up heaven. He's given us the means and the power to see miracles released and the power of God released in our midst. We've been operating in this spirit of revival because of a powerful cry from the people of God. Wherever there's a hunger and thirst, the Lord is sure to satisfy. Amen? Wherever there's a hunger and thirst, the Lord is sure to satisfy and understand that revival is not for the sinner, but the revival is for the sons and daughters of the king. Do I got any king's kids in this room? God bless 20 of you. Do I got any kids, king's kids in this room? Then revi revival is for you. It's when the king's kids cry out. That's what David did in the book of Psalms. He says, oh, that you would revive us again. This was a cry from David, the, the, son of, the son of God. David crying out to God saying, would you revive us again? That your people might rejoice in you. That your people might rejoice in you. One of the great marks of revival. My voice is going to go in and out all day, so bear with me. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Okay, will you forgive me today? The, one of the great marks of revival is rejoicing. When, re, re, when, when revival begins to break out, when heaven begins to open, there's a spirit of rejoicing in the people. How many of you have been rejoicing? And I'm not just talking about rejoicing in church. Come on, somebody. You're rejoicing in the car or on the way home from church. You're rejoicing when you get home. You're rejoicing in work. Come on, somebody. Can we rejoice right now? Can we just rejoice a little? One of the great marks of revival is rejoicing because in times of fresh wind, fresh outpouring, revival 
is a time where the Holy Spirit begins to pour out unusual power. It's when the Holy Spirit begins to work. When you fast and when you pray and when you consecrate unto God, you know, I, I wrote something on Instagram a few weeks ago. I said, a clean plate is a clean slate. <laughs> when, you, when you clean your plate, come on somebody, and you push away from delightful things, it gives the Holy Spirit room to pour out fresh oil. It gives the Holy Spirit room to pour out fresh wine. It gives the Holy Spirit, come on somebody, to begin to rewrite the chapters of your life. Somebody say new season. See, revival is a time where God opens up heaven so that the Holy Spirit could begin to work. Another thing that revival does is revival also begins to awaken the believer. Awaken the believer. Everybody say, awaken. Everybody say, wake up. Look at your neighbor and tell them, wake up, old sleeper. When, when heaven opens and the rains begin to fall and the raging flood begins to rise, rise, it's so that the people of God could be awakened once again. It's so that the believers in the house, the sons and daughters, would be awakened from their sleep. What am I saying to you this morning is that something has woken up in this place. Hey, something is being awakened in your hearts. In Proverbs 24, verse 33, it says, a, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Look at here. And poverty will come upon you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. I think you ought to underline that scripture. Proverbs 24 Verse 33, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little, a little folding of the hands, a little, a little casual worship, a little prayer every now and then. I go to church once a month. And the Bible says poverty. Someone say poverty. Listen, hear me and hear me clear. When the Bible talks about prosperity and poverty, it's not always just talking about money. Prosperity, yes, it has to do with money, but it also has to do with spiritual breakthrough. Woo. Woo. I don't got a voice and I'm preaching pretty good. Someone say breakthrough. So, so prosperity and poverty is not always about money. Prosperity has to do with breakthrough. So poverty has to do with breakdown spiritual breakdown where wherever there's prayerlessness that's when the enemy could come in but prayer and fasting removes vulnerability when when you pray now how many of you have been praying you know how many of you have been stretching your prayer muscles hey we, we were there in chino at the mother church come on somebody and, and I was so proud of our people that went. How many of you went? Oh, Lord. You know, because y'all got some prayer muscles. Some of them, you know, they could go 15 minutes and then all of a sudden they were kicking. <laughs> and, and some of them were worshiping, you know, one song, two songs. And then it was like their arms started hurting. How many know the kingdom is physical? Come on, how many know the kingdom of God is physical? There is a physical response that produces a spiritual breakthrough. And you got to whip that body. And I was so proud. <laughs> I was so proud of our church because you could see that our church has been stretching their prayer life. They've been stretching their praise. They've been stretching their worship. They've been stretching in fasting. Do you realize that in the last 
two months, three, less than three months, we've had two all night prayer meetings. Something is being awakened in the people of Victory Outreach San Diego. When you fast, Howard, when you pray, you're no longer vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. When you fast and when you pray, you are alerted to the devil's schemes. Somebody say, stay on the wall. You can see those issues trying to come. It, it shuts the door on demonic activity. It stops the enemy from catching you off guard with his attacks. We become alerted to life's issues. Man, when you're fasting and praying, you, you become alerted to people who have been sent by the devil to derail your faith. Someone said, wake, wake up. And fasting and prayer charges our life for the master's use. It shifts us from the natural into the spiritual realm. Why does God send revival? It's so that the church could be awakened. In his presence, we are awakened. In his presence, things that were asleep are awakened. In his presence, things that were just even dead, things that were even broken, things that were dislocated, things that were out of joint. When Ezekiel stood over the valley of dry bones, understand those bones were not joined together, but God told him, prophesy dead bones and as he began to prophesy those bones that were fragmented those bones that were dislodged those bones that were dislocated all of a sudden the bible says they begin to rattle and they begin to join back together and they raise up as an exceedingly great army something was awakened when we fast and when we pray dead things can even come back to life Someone say, wake up. wake up. Genesis 28, we read it. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. There's some of you listen to me and this is why I'm going to meddle a little bit, but I'm a preacher, so bear with me. If you've been coming to church, keep coming. If you've been coming and you see this music and you see this worship and you see people at the altar and you're there and you're going to be, you're like, what are these people are crazy. This church, something, what's this? Why are they speaking in that blah, blah, blah? Why is the pastor pacing back and forth? Why are, why are all these things happening? And you come one Sunday, you don't get it. You come two Sundays, you don't get it. But then Jacob says, surely the Lord is in this place, but I did not know it. I came to tell you at one point, you will be brought back to life. Revival is about to hit your life. Touch your neighbor, tell him, keep on coming to church. Because you never know what could happen. You never know what could happen. You never know what miracle could happen. You could bring your brother or sister who's a stone cold sinner to church and you come and you're not even open. You're just like, we just need to go to church. We just need to go to church. We just, I just, you know, I'm tired of my parents bugging me to get right. Let's just go and you bring your brother who's a stone cold drug addict or hooked on CBD or marijuana and he's just out of it. But you never know what could happen because on that Sunday, he might be the one that gets saved. Come on, somebody help me preach this a little bit. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. You never know what's going to happen. Surely the Lord is in this place and we did not know it. You never know when you're going to get your healing. Tell your neighbor, don't miss it. Woo! 
Don't miss a Wednesday. Don't miss a Sunday morning. Don't miss a Sunday night because the waters are stirring at Victory Outreach San Diego. Don't you dare miss. Oh, that could be the day your diabetes gets healed. That could be the day that your arthritis gets healed. I was talking to a pastor yesterday at the prayer at the prayer summit, and I'm walking out. I was at the table signing books, and he goes, Pastor, I'm pastor, he's my good friend. He goes, God healed me in the service from arthritis. He says, I haven't been able to move my fingers, but look, no pain. No, come on, somebody, no pain. Because how many know the power of God is real? And the Lord has a desire to heal you. Surely the Lord is in this place. And we did not know it. And those of you that know it, who knows it? Who knows the Lord is in this place? Okay. You got a job too. That every time you come, make sure you set an environment for miracles. That every time you come into this place, brothers and sisters, you come in ready to set an environment where the power of the Holy Ghost could do what he does best. We're going to see people get saved. We're going to see people get healed. We're going to see miracles. Oh, my God. Come on. Help me a little bit. We're going to see bondages broken. Ready? ready? Come ready. Come ready. Come ready. Come ready.